Doorbell is a short story. If you're not an avid reader, this is a good story to read because it allows you to focus on surface level information like characters, the setting, and the problem. There are really only two characters that are of real importance, one main setting and one problem with a quote-unquote solution. And within the first paragraph, the author gives away a lot of information. We as the reader come to understand it's a first-person narrative. The narrator, despite not knowing the gender, is around 22 years old since it's their fourth year in university, and we get a thorough description of the setting. Now that's a lot of information to start off with. There are also words that you may not understand, like what a university town actually means, residences, and reading week. A university town is any town where the larger population is occupied by university students. Waterloo, like in the story, is a university town because there are a number of students that attend Wilfrid Laurier University, the University of Waterloo, and there is also Conestoga College. Residences are housing buildings on campus that are occupied by university students, mostly the first-year students. And Reading Week refers to a week break for students for them to ideally read, but it's a chance for students to relax. It's always important to define the words that you don't understand, otherwise you may miss out on something important. In the second paragraph, the narrator continues to explain the change in weather, which is related to our setting. It's April, it's exam time for university students, it's getting warmer out, so more students are outside, etc. With such a focus on the setting, it must be important, so it's something to make note of. Then, the last line of the second paragraph is interesting. The narrator teases the reader by talking about a situation and that it made him or her reflect on their patients. But we don't know exactly what the situation is. So, we have a character, we have a setting, but we don't have a problem. The remaining three little bits of text there at the bottom of the page give us more information. Nothing too important, but still noteworthy. Whatever the situation is, the narrator does not regret their actions, whatever they are. The narrator has three roommates in Sheldon, Patrick, and Angela. And due to the stress level of exam time, a quick and satisfying end to the problem is needed. So, we still need to know what the problem is. We get a more specific description of the apartment that the narrator lives in. It's located on the corner of Columbia and King Street. It's run down, or sketchy. The stairwell is narrow. There are a total of three apartments within the building, and each apartment overlooks the street below and the front door to the building. And finally, we are introduced to the problem. Someone every day around 11 a.m. is ringing the doorbell to their apartment and running away, and the narrator is annoyed by this. The only other person home is Sheldon, and he doesn't seem to mind. The narrator waits for them one morning to ring, so he or she can chase after them. Now, with that being said, it is somewhat safe to assume at this point that the narrator is male. The narrator makes a brief reference to having a girlfriend, standing 6'1 and weighing 197 pounds. Those don't necessarily mean it's a male narrator, but I think it's safe to assume. Okay, let's move along. The narrator manages to chase a group of high school kids down the street and catch one of them. Using a simile, the author describes the squirming of the grade 9 boy as a worm being slowly squished between fingers. This is where we as the reader can begin to think about the narrator's actions, to which he stated earlier he doesn't regret what he did. The narrator forcefully puts the young boy onto the lawn below the balcony of the apartment. Sheldon is too afraid to show himself above, and the narrator tries to explain to the young boy how annoyed he is by the ringing of the doorbell. Once the narrator lets the boy go, the narrator states that if you're going to commit an action, be prepared for the consequences. We'll come back to this. The boy comes back and asks for an apology, or how the narrator treated him. When the narrator also asks for an apology, the young boy apologizes, but also explains that it wasn't him who rang the doorbell. We'll come back to this too. Both sides apologize, and we're left with this kind of strange sentence to close off the story. So here are some things to consider. The first thing is that the overall question is always, did the narrator do the right thing? Were his actions just? 
And to answer number one, perhaps we need to look at the setting of the story. The setting is important because it may tell us why the narrator chose to be aggressive. Think about it, it's exam time, it's stressful, and the ringing of the doorbell is just the type of inconvenience or annoyance to cause someone to act out of character. This doesn't justify the narrator's actions, but maybe in your opinion it does. We all like to think that morality is being on one side or another, when in fact that line of morality is constantly shifting depending on your situation. So perhaps our narrator isn't an aggressive person, maybe he simply got caught up acting out of character due to the stressful circumstances. Next, let's examine the young boy's decision making. He claims he's not responsible because he didn't actually ring the doorbell. Hmm. This is what we call guilty by association. If you're in a group causing trouble, but you're not actually the one doing anything wrong, you are still to blame. This is just like bullying that happens in the hallway. If you choose to watch bullying happen, rather than stepping in to stop it, you are a part of the problem. Next, there is reconciliation. So this is a happy ending. Both sides humble themselves enough to apologize, and this is not an easy action and one that should not be overlooked. And then there are consequences. The narrator says that if you're going to commit inappropriate actions, you deserve the consequences. So, you may ask yourself, for ringing the doorbell and being annoying, did the young boy deserve the consequences he received? How far is too far? And finally, there's that last line, and it's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Birds sing even when it's raining. The idea here is that birds can still see the beauty in a day despite the poor circumstances that are out of their control, like the weather. And the narrator states how his actions demonstrated an inability to do this. The ringing of the doorbell is the poor circumstance, and he reacts terribly to it.